you choose to be unforgiving in this life, the consequence is what Jesus said, his strongest warning. Do you remember that from chapter 18? In fact, let's, let's turn there. Chapter 18, verse 34. This is what Jesus said. This is, this is the strongest in the Gospels warning to believers Jesus makes. Of all of, of his teaching to the disciples, this was the, the high watermark of severity. He never says anything this strongly in the Gospels. He does say it in Revelation. He does say it in other places, but not in the Gospels. Do you remember verse 34? And you remember what Jesus said? He said that the strongest warning Jesus ever gave his disciples, he warned that the result of bitter and unforgiving heart was grave. And as we look there, he says in verse 34, he brings up this, this idea of the torturers. In fact, I want to read it. In fact, it's so good I don't want to um, paraphrase it. Jesus tells this long, starting in verse 21, he starts telling this, this parable, and as he gets down to verse 34, he says, and his master, the one that forgave him the incalculable 10,000 talent deal, which is a picture of God the Father, his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers. Some say, oh, God would never, no, it's not the executioners. He isn't losing his salvation. He isn't being killed and, and no longer part. It's to the tormentors. He delivers him to the torturers, the, the tormentors, until he should pay all that was due him. What's due to it? What, what is due God? What do we pay God? We, we obey him. That's the sacrifice of our heart is obedience. This guy is going to be in the tormentors till he obeys. And what's the obedience? The obedience is to be kind and tender hearted and forgiving, like God in Christ has forgiven you. What happens if we don't? What if we think we're an exception? You know, exceptionism plagues the church. We think that's for them. That's for them. We read the Bible. Oh, that's a good one for my wife. Oh, that's a good one for my husband. Oh, that's really good for my kids. We're supposed to read the Bible. That's really good for me. And I need that change in my life. What does he say? If we're exceptions to the rule and we can, can cultivate this bitterness, bitterness leads to intense inner torment. Now look how Jesus says it in the next verse, verse 35. 34 would have been a great story and we could just push that off into the collection of great stories Jesus told. But he, he points it at us. You ever feel uncomfortable, you know, when I was teaching my boys how to hunt, you know, they're cleaning their guns and they're turning them toward me. I go, well, let's turn that the other way here. Let's all point our guns that way, you know, while we're cleaning them in case, you know, I know they're empty, but let's just do that, you know. Jesus points it toward us and we start feeling uncomfortable. That's why everybody says, well, he's not talking to us. It, it isn't what he meant. He didn't say that. He was talking to someone else. No, he did mean it, and he is talking to us. And he says in verse 35, so my heavenly Father will do to you if each of you, he individualizes it right down to each of us are, are responsible for God to from our heart forgive our brother his trespasses. We have to be kind and tender-hearted. Why? Because bitterness leads to intense inner torment. Jesus said that we hand ourselves over to the torturers, verse 34, when we embitter our hearts against someone. Those who live in the gall of bitterness imprison themselves in an emotional concentration camp. That was what I told you about the person. Do you want to take that? That person that you're so bitter about, do you want to take them with you everywhere? They'll go on every holiday trip with you. They'll, they'll be at every wedding and everything else. They'll just be there all the time spoiling everything because you're imprisoning yourself with them. What's amazing is we become the victims of immense self-inflicted internal torment. Nurturing bitterness is as foolish as drinking poison. It's just like diving into a dark pit not knowing what's at the bottom, just jumping. That's foolish. So is bitterness. Our refusal to forgive walls us into solitary confinement, and bitterness becomes our tormentor as we're confined in the situation. 
Jesus warns that any believer is a candidate for this unspeakable emotional and mental torment when bitterness-producing unforgiveness is practiced. 